Welcome back to the Underwater Filming Tip Series. My name is Vanessa Karakea, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about red filters and some other filters. And there are a few things you should know about red filters, when to use them and when not to use them. And first of all, a huge shout out to Daniel Keller from Keldon Lights for helping out with this episode. He provided a lot of information. Most of the filters you're gonna see in this episode are provided by Keldon Lights, but this episode is not sponsored, just to get that out of the way. And as you may have gathered, we love Keldon products, so personally, I would always recommend them. So let's dive right into it. What does a red filter actually do? In the white balancing episode, if you haven't seen it already, go and check it out. We discussed how to get the best colors with doing a manual white balance when you're using, for example, a white balancing card. And adding a red filter to this equation is gonna get you even better colors. Essentially what the red filter does is it enhances the red color that you lose the deeper you go. So with adding a red filter and doing the manual white balance, you're gonna overall get a better image and you're gonna have more of the red color spectrum. And it doesn't only enhance the red colors, it also enhances the blue colors. So the blues are gonna be more vivid and more richer. So overall, you're only gonna have benefits when you're using a red filter. Or will you not? That's the big question. So when should you actually use a red filter? So number one is when you're diving deeper than three meters. And number two is when you're using natural light to brighten up your scene. So you're not using any video lights. In this case, you would add the red filter and then you would do a manual white balance. And if you compare that to the shots without the red filter, then you're clearly gonna see a big difference in the colors. We did some side-by-side -side comparison, the same camera, the Panasonic GH5, on a tray with the same lens, one camera with the filter and one camera without the filter, the same settings. And here you can really see the difference with the camera and the red filter in comparison to the camera without the red filter. And another benefit of a red filter is that some cameras really have problem doing a manual white balance underwater. So when you add a red filter, it helps the camera to do a correct white balance and your image will be correctly balanced. And there is a downside to red filters and essentially that's a downside of any filter. It will block some light depending on the density of the filter. So you're gonna have to increase your ISO to compensate for the light that you're losing. And we talked about ISO in one of the previous episodes. And when you're filming with the natural ambient light, it doesn't mean that you have to take off your video lights from your camera setup. On the contrary, you want to leave them on there because otherwise your balance is gonna be completely off. So always leave the lights on your system, no matter if you want to use them or not, and also leave the batteries in the video lights. So now let's get to when not to use a red filter. So first off, don't use a red filter when you're filming in greenish waters. In that case, you want to use a magenta filter. So everything that I'll be saying about the red filters applies to the magenta filters. So when I say a red filter, I mean red filter or a magenta filter depending if you're filming in bluish waters or in greenish waters, just to make it more simple throughout the episode. The second scenario where you don't want to use a red filter is when you're filming above three meters. So if you're filming between three meters and the surface, you don't want to use a red filter. Otherwise, you're gonna have a reddish tint on your footage because the red filters start to work properly only when the red color spectrum starts to disappear. So the deeper you go. If you're planning on going snorkeling or if you're filming in a very, very shallow water, then I would definitely not use a red filter for that because essentially the sunlight is gonna give you the best colors. And lastly, don't use a red filter when video lights are your only light source. So for example, when you're going night diving or cave diving, where you have zero natural light. And the way you set your white balance for those scenarios is you set your color temperature, the Kelvin value, to the Kelvin value of your video lights. So in this case, it's 5,600 Kelvin. And the reason for that is the video lights are your only light source. So you're not gonna have any color temperature shifting throughout your dive because the video lights are your only light source. So it doesn't matter how deep you dive, the video lights always have the same Kelvin value, in this case 5,600 Kelvin, no matter how deep you go. And a good example to understand this is when you dive with a submersible. 
So it's pitch black and there's no sunlight. There's no natural light. The scene is only lightened by the lights of the submarine. And there the color temperature does not change, no matter how deep the submarine goes. So it doesn't matter if you're at 500 feet or 5,000 feet, if you look out of the glass dome, the scene always looks the same. Well, maybe not the, the, the landscape, but the, the way the light brightens up the scene won't change in color temperature. So if I film inside a submarine, I will set my white balance to the Kelvin value of the lights of the submarine, and then I won't have to change my white balance throughout the whole submarine dive. It starts to become tricky when the submarine starts to ascend again, and then comes into the zone when you have the sunlight mixing up with the artificial lights from the submarine. And then the white balancing becomes a lot more difficult. And the same applies to when you're diving and filming with the natural light and the artificial video lights. This is probably the most difficult situation when you're filming underwater. And these mixed light conditions can really mess up your shot. In general, you want to avoid these mixed light conditions. So when you're filming with the blue ambient light and the white video lights. Now, what can you do when you want to film with the ambient natural light, but you want to film with video lights as well? So let me explain the mixed light problem. The reason you do a manual white balance is to turn the blue ambient natural light into white light so that your camera can display the colors correctly and then you have a nice balanced image instead of a bluish tinted image. So before the white balance, when you hold your white balancing card in front of the camera, it's gonna be bluish and then after the white balance, it's gonna be properly balanced. That's what you want to achieve and that's why you do a manual white balance. So the camera is gonna enhance the red color spectrum to compensate for the blue color. So when you turn on your video lights, when you've done a manual white balance to the ambient light, your video lights are gonna turn red. Well, they're not gonna turn red, but all the objects that are brightened by your video lights are gonna to be too red. They're gonna be oversaturated. And the reason for this is by enhancing the red color spectrum, you're enhancing the red wavelength in your white video lights. Because as we learned in the white balancing episode, daylight is around 5,000, 5,600 Kelvin. And the white video lights are 5,600 Kelvin in this case. And that actually is a very warm color temperature in comparison to the blue ambient natural light, which is a very cold color temperature. So white light actually contains all sorts of color spectrums. And by doing a manual white balance, you're increasing the red wavelength in your white light. And that's what makes the light look red. So mixing up video light with ambient light is a big problem and it's more or less referred to as the mixed light problem. But luckily there's a solution to this problem. Although this episode is not focused on video lights or lighting, the next filter I'm going to talk about is for video lights. These filters have become a big part in underwater videography and they solve the mixed light problem. And the filters I'm talking about are the Kelden ambient light filters. These filters are made for the video lights, not for the camera lens. So you add them in front of your video light. And the reason for this is quite simple and genius. The ambient filters are gonna convert the white light to the blue ambient light color temperature. So before you add the ambient filter, your video light is white. And after you've added the filter, it's converted to the blue ambient light temperature. So that way you convert the white light to the ambient light and then you don't have this mixed light condition where you have the white warm light and then you have the blue ambient natural light. In this case, you only have the blue ambient light. So that way you completely avoid the mixed light conditions. So when you do a manual white balance to the natural ambient light and you turn on your video lights, the scene would be too red. And now it's gonna match the color temperature of the natural ambient light so when you do your manual white balance, you don't have two different color temperatures. You only have one color temperature. So the ambient light filters solve the mixed light problem on the water. And by the way, you can get those ambient light filters for greenish waters as well. So it's gonna match the greenish ambient light. And you can head over to keldonlights.com to check out the animations. There's an animation for the ambient light filter and for the Keldon spectrum filter. There you get really detailed information on how these work. 
And when you combine the ambient light filters with the Kelvin Spectrum filter, you're gonna get the best results, simply because they have been engineered and designed to work together perfectly. So let's get to the red filters. There are a ton of red filters out there and Kelvin Light actually calls the red filters spectrum filters. The spectrum filters actually go a step further than the simple red filters. So the spectrum filters don't only correct the red color spectrum, they actually look at the color spectrums that are around the reddish color. So they correct the red, the orange, the yellows, the greens, and even the blues, so that you get optimal color underwater. But of course you can use any other red filter out there. We simply use those because we think they are the best you can get. I'll talk to you on the water camera store, they can provide tons of different filters, different densities, different sizes, different qualities, and then you can just decide what you want to use. And speaking of densities, essentially, the deeper you go, the denser the red filter should be. So this would be for a more shallower dive, and this would be for a more deeper dive. Because the deeper you go, the more reds you're gonna lose, and the more reds you're gonna have to add. So that's why you use the denser red filter instead of a lighter red filter. The denser the filter, the more light it's gonna block. So just have that in mind. So the filter come in all sorts of sizes, densities, and shapes. And depending on the camera and the lens you're gonna use, you're gonna need the specific filter that will match your setup. There's plenty of ways how to attach filters. So if you have a flat port, you can attach the filter to the flat port. So outside of your housing. Sometimes you would be using a flip holder so you can flip on and off the filter and that will be attached in front of your port as well. So you can flip on and flip off. And if you're using a dome port, you're gonna be attaching the red filter to your camera lens. And if you bought a filter which is bigger, the diameter is bigger, and you want to attach it to a smaller lens, the way you can do that is you can use a filter ring. So essentially you screw on the step down ring to match the filter thread of your other lens and then you can attach it to the other lens. But we'll get to filter rings in a second. But what happens if you use a fisheye lens or a wide angle lens? There's no way to mount a filter in front of those lenses. And if you're filming in a beautiful shallow reef, you definitely want to add a red filter to those wide angle lenses. So what you're going to need is filter sheets. And those filter sheets, you can actually cut out to the size that you need. And these filter sheets, you won't add in front of your lens. You will actually add them at the back of your lens. Because in front of the lens, you're not gonna have a chance to attach them. If you're one of the lucky ones and you have a lens that has a slot for those filter sheets, so you can just simply cut out the size that you need of those filter sheets and slide them in, add the lens to your camera, and you're ready to go. But if you're not one of the lucky ones, like I am, uh, thank you Panasonic and Olympus, they do not provide those slots at the back of the lenses. But there is a workaround. So what you do is you cut out a rectangular piece and then you start cutting to a circular form so that it matches the size of the back of your lens. Once you cut out the round shape, you just add some sticky tape to it and then you can attach it at the back of your lens. But be sure not to stick sticky tape over the connections, otherwise your camera is not gonna recognize your lens. I usually use about three stripes of very strong and clear sticky tape. And try not to touch the filter sheet because they are very sensitive. So I definitely recommend to do this inside and not outside. If you want to try out everything without damaging the high quality filter sheets, you can get light gel filter swatch books. And this was a tip of Nick Hope, so thank you for that. And these swatch books are a little collection of light gels you would actually use on video lights above water in the filmmaking industry. And this was a huge help for me to figure out how to actually cut these filters. And these swatch books are really inexpensive. They're like 10 or 20 bucks. So if you damage those filters, you don't damage the more expensive and the good ones. They are not high quality for your lens. They are high quality for the video lights above water, but they are not designed for your camera lens. So if you get the dedicated underwater filter sheets, they're gonna be a lot better than the cheap ones. And one last tip for the filter sheets, I store the cutout filter sheets with the corresponding proper filter. So for example, I have the magenta cutout and I have the magenta filter 
and I have them together so I always know that's the density and that's the magenta filter that match. And the same goes with the red filter. I'll have the dense red filter with the dense filter sheet. And then I would have the lighter filter with the lighter filter sheet. So every time I grab my filter box, I already know there's a corresponding sheet inside. You should change the scotch tape every now and again because it does collect a lot of dust and dirt. And you don't want to have any dust or dirt anywhere near your camera sensor because when you attach the filter sheet to the back of your lens, it goes between the lens and the camera sensor. So if there's any dirt on the filter sheet, it may end up on your camera sensor and you definitely want to avoid that. So make sure that it's nice and clean. And if it's not, just swap it out. Okay, this is great if you have bigger cameras, but what do you do if you have an action camera? As mentioned in one of the previous episodes, how to get cinematic footage out of your action camera. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. There are several options how to mount filters on action cameras. You can use clip-on filters that you just clip on in front. Then you have the screw-on filters. So you just screw on the filters. The benefit of this is that you can use those filters on other cameras if you upgrade your camera system. And the third option is flip holders. You can flip on and flip off the filters. For me personally, I like the screw on filters just because you can upgrade later on and you can get step up or step down rings to match the corresponding lens. Which brings me to the next point, step up and step down rings. If you bought a filter that has a bigger thread than your lens, you can buy these step up and step down rings and then you can convert the filter thread to match the thread of your lens so that you can attach it to your lens. And that way you don't have to buy two sizes. These filter rings are so cheap and I'm either in a set, in a bundle with all sorts of different sizes. You can stack them or you can buy the specific one that you need. And now comes the final part of this episode. There is a question that we get asked a lot. And the question is, why do you need the red filter? Why don't you just add the red in post-production? And the answer is pretty simple. If you did not capture any red color information, you cannot boost any reds in post-production. It's that simple. So if your camera sensor did not record any reds, they're simply not there. It absolutely makes sense to use a red filter, do a manual white balance, and then you will have red color information in your footage. And then when you color correct, you will have some information to work with. So that's it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, as usual, leave a comment below and we will get back to you. Safe diving and I will hopefully see you very soon in the next episode. Nope, definitely don't look into that light. And the third option is you can get flip flop, flip flops. Yeah, get flip flops. What I just did, you shouldn't be doing. Uh, it says use in water only. I did melt one of those filters. So definitely make sure when you get out of the water that you switch off the lights immediately because you will melt the plastic. And that would be a real shame. So it says use in water only and just do that.